What is up YouTube? Just Dark is back with another video. And as I said before, uh, the videos I'm going to be posting is going to be more art related because I've entered the webtoon contest of 2018. So most videos when I have time and when I reach certain when I reach a certain uploads and things like that, basically what I have of my priorities uh, done with the comic and then I will try to focus some time on making tutorials and videos and things like that so this is going to be hopefully a quick video that's just going to give a very brief overview of how I go about my comic creating process uh, how to slice or how to create pages for webtoon in particular because this this particular uh, project that I'm making is for webtoons like exclusively um, that's just my strategy uh, for this story and um, yeah so I'm just gonna show how I go about doing it and things like that I'm just gonna get right into it now okay so you go to file new now just to save yourself some time you could simply just create a custom preset and I already have a custom preset um, made for featured webtoon size. Um, I like to work in featured webtoon size because I intend, I'm making this comic with the intention to be featured. So I don't want to go through making it the discover size, which is 800, uh, 800 by 1280. I just rather go straight to the feature size, which is 700 by 1180. Um, so to do that, you have the custom, you just make your size 700 by 1180, and then you go to save. And this is on Clip Studio. And then you name it. And I just call mine Featured WT, or Featured Webtoon. And then you press OK. And that's how you make your uh, template size, so you don't have to keep making it all over again. It'll already be saved there, you don't have to think about the page size and things like that. But if you look here, I work in a very long canvas. And this is roughly 15 to 13 pages long. Now what I do is I have the page length, which is 11 by 80, and I times that. And every time I times it, I add, I write it down on a piece of note paper, or I'll leave it in like a sticky note somewhere so that I, so that I'm aware of the page count and the um, and the pixel size, and we're going to, we're going to need these uh, measurements later on for slicing. That's why it's good to write them down somewhere and save them, have them close by to your computer, or just better yet, save them on your computer for slicing later on. And we'll get into that once we get to that point. Another good tip to keep in mind is to not work too big of a file. So I think the max size that uh, most of these image manipulating programs use is 30,000. Um, the max size that I've ever used, I believe, was 28,000. Yeah, I'm just going to say 28,000. But that's a big file to work on. And depending on how uh, powerful your computer is, even if it's a very powerful computer, computer you don't want to work at a huge size so depending on your computer you can limit it to 15 pages per per batch and what I mean by per batch is that my my uh, comic creation process is I sketch a bunch of panels I format them then I ink these panels and then I flatten them and then I move on to the to the next set um, shading and adding the effects and stuff is fairly fast and simple um, at least the approach that I use um, but I like to do things in batches working one panel by one panel by one panel like that is it's, it's not very efficient and if you want to reach deadlines and get uh, episodes done within a certain amount of time you want to work in batches and this is the way um, I've been doing it um, so you don't want to work too big of a file whenever you pre press control s and this is only like 13 pages this is only 13 pages, but because I have multiple files, I try not to have too many, but I'll get into that after. I try not to have too many layers. Um, but even that, when you press Control-S to save it, it still takes a little bit of time, but it's not like super slow or anything, but just 
do see the bar. So just keep that in mind. Keep your computer um, your computer specs in mind and how much it could it can handle. Um, my computer it's a two in one. It's a Cintiq Companion two. So it's it's not like the strongest one, but it's almost up there. So it can handle quite a bit. But just be mindful of that. I do the sketching and the layout of the overall uh, of the overall um, series or episode. I mean, on one canvas where I'm just dedicating dedicating it to the sketches only. That way, if the file does end up being a bit bigger than like 16 pages, then I could easily save it, and it shouldn't take up too much space. But it always depends on your computer, <coughs> and there's a way to cut and slice this up so that it becomes seamless on the webtoon page because i used to have photoshop but i can't afford photoshop anymore and you could do the same thing on gimp and i'm pretty sure if there's any other manipulative uh photo manipulating programs they might have so long as there's a slicing tool then you should be able to slice it up no matter how long well it doesn't matter how long because i think the match is like three thirty thousand something pixel length but anyways so once I ink I do the coloring I check everything and then I lay on the text okay and you don't have to worry about the text or your pictures being cut up and all messed up because the way we're gonna slice it up on GIMP it's going to get rid of any type of gaps or your fears of anything not coming out seamless and nice the way it's supposed to be that's why I work on the long canvas so I don't have to worry about it um, and if you do want to keep track of your pages, let's say for example, if you do want to have like a rough estimate about how long your pages are, you could just like, I just throw on an extra layer and I do the, um, I do like page one, <coughs> page two, I, I did this to go down to like 24 or something. Yeah, this goes down to like, nope, this one goes down to 12, so that's good. Yeah, so let's say for example, let's say for example this, I just want to show you it on GIMP. Let's say you did start on a page and you wanted to do it like one page or two pages or three pages. You go to edit canvas size. Nope, not canvas properties. Edit canvas, change canvas size. And here you could change the canvas size. You could press this little square up here and that will change the length starting from the bottom and then up or from the bottom and then down okay um, so usually what I would do if I if I was starting at the original page size 700 by 1180 I would just like get like a fill square or something like that just so I could be aware of like how many pages I am doing <coughs> and I would just like just simply like fill in the bottom part like here and then I'll mark page one and then I'll go to canvas size change canvas size and then I just times that 1180 times 2 and that'll be 2360 I'm not fast with math press this top button so that this change goes down Oops. and to get it precise and not do it manually with your fingers already have like the amount that you want and right there that's two pages and if I just want to keep track of it again I just make another mark real quick with the fill square and I just use this as a guide okay so once you get done coloring flattening the effects the text and all that kind of stuff now you want to save your file so you're gonna to go to file gonna to go to save as and you want to save it as a JPEG just automatically save as a, as a JPEG Okay, so I already I already have a GIMP file saved that has all my slicing guides on it. So I'm just going to show you guys that real quick. So this is a GIMP file. GIMP files are normally saved as uh, XCF or something like that. You'll see it when you open up GIMP and when they ask you to save your layer files and things like that. So you'll see all these blue guides. These are slicing guides or just regular guides. And I'm going to show you guys how to get your thing like this. And at this point, this is how you slice up your episodes. Okay. So you go to um, new file. You want to save it. Uh, you want to open it the same way you open up your 
file for Clip Studio. You already have the size there. That's why this thing keeps acting funny. I'm like, why is it always a little bit of a pixel off? And that's why I have a one there instead of a zero. Oh my god. Okay, so 700 by 2832 and that's 24 pages. That's why I have it like that. But if you wanna like, if your file size is shorter or smaller than that, then do that. But that's like the max size that I like to have this file saved as 24. And then with that, I'm going to press OK. So again, you're starting with a large canvas. With this canvas, you want to go to File and Open as Layers. And I'm going to look for my comic JPEG file. OK. And you want to make sure it's nice and aligned. It should already be uh, aligned, but just make sure it is because you might need to move it around to readjust it or something like that. So just make sure everything's nice and neat. Zoom into it. Make sure everything looks good. You see that little bit of white over there? Not looking good. That's going to look terrible on Web2, so you want to fix that. Okay. So once all that's all good. Oops. Zoomed out way too much. All right. Once that is all set. The next thing you're going to do is start the slice. To do that, you go to, let me see if I can remember this. You go to Image, Guides, New Guide, but you don't want to do it by percent. You just want to press New Guide, which would be like the second option. Uh, you set it to horizontal and you put the positioning. So in order to make the first guide for page one, I put in the regular webtoon size, which is 1180, at least that's the size that I'm working on. 1180, you might be working on uh, 1200, but this is 1180, and that's my first guide, and bam, it goes right there. Don't touch that guide, don't move it, like don't do anything with it. Leave that guide where it is and do the same process. It's a little tedious, it's not super tedious, but if you already have the page amount written down somewhere or maybe on a I just keep it written down because I'm old-fashioned I like paper and pen but um, you don't have to have it written down you could have it saved in like a sticky note and copy and paste it to the grid uh, thing so again go to image guides new guide and do it again but instead of doing 1180 which is for page one we're not going to do 2360 which is page two see page two I'm gonna do it one more time image guides new guide make sure direction is horizontal and you want to change the positioning so now we're on page three so page three would be 3540 because 1180 times three is 3540 and then I have page three so I do this all the way down until I get to no change is necessary so I do this all the way down until I get to the end and then I stop at this last point and there's no need to add an, add another guide all the way down at the bottom because obviously that's, that's the canvas size. So that's how you create your guides. We're going to keep it as a GIMP file which is uh, like XFP, uh, it's XCF. We're going to keep it just like that. This is going to be the slicing station. So if you just make one nice size file with about 15 pages worth of slice guides um, then you'll never have to do your slicing guides again. Just do it once, save it, and name it like slicing station, slice this, slice that. Because as you, as you could look over here, you'll see all my other layers, and these were from previous episodes. I just keep opening up them as file as a layer in this same file, and just go into the slicing um, script. So now that we got the guides down, we're gonna go to filters, and you're gonna go down to web. And then you're going to go to slice. On Photoshop, the process is a lot more faster. But like I said before, once you save the slicing guides and just keep that same same file the way it is, you'll never have to make the guides again. Okay, so this is how we are going to save the. This is how we're going to slice the entire webtoon. You're going to choose your path. For this, just for demonstration purposes, I'm not. Uh, you could go to desktop, whatever, whatever other. I know I'm not saying things on desktop, but I'm not gonna do that because I need to make a folder for it, keep it organized. So I like to go to other. 
I like to go to desktop just so I know where it's at and then I go to create folder I create the folder I'll just call it test episode 3 enter and then click open so that's the path to where it's going to be at next they're going to ask for your file name for the export and that's basically going to be what what the end of every uh, file is going to be called uh, I'm just gonna say um, I don't know I'm gonna say Dragon Masters DMV YT Webtoon whoops give it your desired name file name prefix says that's what you want the beginning of every file to say so I'll just have it episode 3 at the beginning of every file image format JPEG that's the only imaging that webtoon accepts separate image folder separate image folder no we leave that the way it is folder for image export folder for image export oh yeah so this is going to be the name of the folder I don't know why they had this folder name twice it's kind of redundant if you ask me but just put what you want your folder name to be otherwise you're going to be having a fit trying to find the thing on your cluttered desktop like mine again we're just going to call it episode 3 DMV Dragon Masters V script for blah, blah blah don't worry about that don't change it leave it the way it is and a lot of people ask about how do you keep it seamless and spacing this is how you do it when you go to slice it they do ask you do you want space between the table elements leave it exactly the way it is at zero that's how you get that nice seamless gapless flow with your webtoon page layout uh, then they're asking to skip animation for i don't really know what that animation thing is so just leave all that the way it is um and then press ok but before you press ok just double check to make sure that you're on the layer because there was a couple of times when i tried to slice my thing and it wasn't slicing it kept bringing up this weird error talking about non-drawable element blah 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 and it's because i wasn't selected on the layer that i really wanted to slice i was selected on a layer that was like not even on so it couldn't slice anything basically so just make sure that before you go to filters web slice make sure that it is on the actual layer that you want to slice okay so get just finished slicing my webtoon I'm going to show it to you guys right now okay so now you'll see here that everything is nice and sliced up nice and neat this doesn't affect the original file because you've already saved the file and it's on the GIMP as a full image as well so you have like more copies of it so this isn't going to uh, affect the file at all and obviously you could go through it like this and it looks terrible but guess what it's not for horizontal it's for vertical so now we're gonna head over to webtoon and actually get this thing uploaded all right now it's time to publish your perfectly sliced webtoon so we go here to publish so if you're doing this for the contest or not it's still the same process you go to upload I s and what I did as you can see there's this thing called test here and this is just where I test out certain uploads or certain sizes and how I want things to look before I even really upload it to the actual contest I'm gonna do it as if I was actually starting from scratch so we're going to go to create a series yay I'm gonna copy Dragon Masters because I have no originality. Um, I'm just being like silly. Thumbnail. See that image size and everything? Just make sure that your canvas size is this 436 by 436, and it's a JPEG. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, I gotta find the Dragon Masters. Oh, there goes thumbnail right there. Let's do it. We're gonna upload another episode of Dragon Masters. Mm. <laughs> Genre two, uh, let's do real romance. <laughs> okay, sorry about that, guys. I thought I, whew, I thought I posted it into like the actual contest thing, and I did. I do not want to be disqualified because some stupid mistake. So I just had to fix that real quick. I fixed it, and now we're back onto the tutorial. Okay. <sighs> so once you go through the create your series, it's gonna go to the next step. Would be 
step two which is episodes and as you can see here they have attention check out our editors tips before you publish this is perfect I suggest reading through it looking through the whole thing saving it to your computer taking notes like screenshot notes because very helpful tips on how to publish specifically for webtoon okay um, uploading instructions are also here but I'm just gonna make it simple because everyone loves video you put your thumbnail size thumbnail you put in your thumbnail, you name your episode, or you don't have to name your episode. Like you could, I think you could leave this blank. I'm not really sure, but I just threw it in there. So now we're going to go to select file to upload. Okay, go to that. Find your file folder, and these are all of our sliced up, beautifully sliced up images. As you can see, it's all numbered automatically by the slicing script from GIMP. So you have episode three, five, six, like those are the page numbers. So you don't have to like put in all that detail and things like that. That's what the slicing tool automatically does for you. So you don't have to worry about any of that. So I like to just hold it or right click and then select starting from the first and then going like so, and it should upload it in that order. There's always this like extra file thing here. I'm not really sure. I think that's like for the actual online thing, but don't worry about that blank file. Just leave it where it's at. Um, I'm going to select the rest by holding control and just clicking. And these are all my pages and I just press open and they all start uploading. Here it is. Here are the pages. And before you publish and press that publish episode, you want to go to preview. I like to do the mobile preview because PC, I'm not really, like, I don't really care about that. The mobile preview, it comes up with the window that's approximately the size of a, um, you know, phone screen. And you can scroll through it to make sure everything looks nice. And if you see, it looks no different than how it looked in the Clip Studio because everything sliced uh, via GIMP the way it's supposed to be sliced as if this was a website. Everything's seamless. And yeah, that's how you get that nice seamless flow. And that's it. That's how you do it. And then you press publish and it's published. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Please do head over to my webtoon. Because I've entered the contest. This is the real Dragon Master's Vault. It is not a romance. It is a fantasy action. Although there are some... Uh, perhaps some romantic uh, things happening here and there perhaps uh, you'll have to read to find out but I have three episodes up as of the making of this video or the recording of this video I'm supposed to be getting to episode 4 pretty soon so here it is go subscribe or just go rate it because I know we're in a competition but if you don't want me to win at least go rate it and give it a good star <laughs> On his blade. But anyways, this is my comic, Dragon Master's Vault. Go check it out, especially if you found that this tutorial was helpful. Sorry if it was a little bit dragged out, but I wanted to touch a little bit upon my process and the slicing especially and how to upload and things like that. Because I know that people are going to be asking. If you do have any more questions, do feel free to uh, leave them in the comments section below. Uh, I will do my best to get to them as soon as possible. I'm, I'm usually pretty active on like as far as replying because I'm not that popular or anything like that and yeah so I hope you guys enjoyed it and peace